Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. It is Monday. It's October Monday. October 21st. So it that's is. It. <laughs> I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're here in the studio with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And one of our favorite guests is here today. Yes. Alexandra Silver is Yay! here with us today. Al Silbs in the house. She is. We will get to Ms. Silver, but first our top five. Today we found out all about who's going to be saying Bobby Baby all this season. That is right. We're talking about company, of, of course. course. So there was a big uh, cast announcement this morning. We've already known Katrina Link and Patty Lupone, of course, were going to be doing company. And now we know all of the other ladies and gal ladies and boys that are joining them. We have Matt Doyle as Jamie. Um, that's the character. Was Amy. Amy. And it's now Jamie. Not getting married today. That's right. There you go. That's Aww. right. Itai Benson will be playing his fiance, Paul. And then we have Jennifer Samardis. Sarah, Christopher Fitzgerald as David, Christopher Sieber as Harry, mm -hmm. Nikki Renee Daniels as Jenny, Greg Hildreth as Peter, and Terrence Archie as Larry. Joining them are Claiborne Elder as Andy, Bobby Conti Thornton as PJ, and Kyle Dean Massey as Theo. My goodness. So some of those roles were originally played by women. Yes. Like Claiborne Elders mm -hmm. playing Andy was April. That's Just right. Saying. No, there's all sorts of lots of gender swapping all go. about. Um, uh, they will uh, the show will begin previews at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater on March 2nd of 2020, and it will officially open on March 22nd. There are so many people in that cast Sondheim's that we love birthday. so dearly. There yes, Sondheim's 90th. Um, very very exciting stuff. Cannot wait Can't to check wait. out this company. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe I'm, I'm about to say this, but another musical has officially joined the boards for the 2021 season. 2021. It's already a stacked year. It's, 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 it's almost here. here. It's almost right. here. <laughs> almost here. But listen to this one. The Who's Tommy yes. is coming back for its first ever Broadway revival, directed by Des Mackinoff who also co-conceived it and co-wrote it and won a Tony Award for directing it originally. He did, yes. So this will come in 2021. But, of course, it's based on the iconic 1969 rock album. That's right. The Who's Tommy feature album, concept album. Um, right. What can I tell you about it? Uh, pinball playing wizard. You know all this. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any casting. It's 2021. No, we have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything. We don't know anything. But, yeah. of course, like, it was done at the Kennedy Center. Unaffiliated production. Right. Don't look at that cast. Just think about the future. 2021. Tommy, Very cool. back on the Broadway. Can't wait. There you go. And as Ryan Lee Gilbert so eloquently said on Friday, Netflix loves us. <laughs> I believe They're I said they were us. obsessed oh. with us. It's, yeah, yes, but uh, no, and they totally are. Uh, Mike Birbiglia, if you uh, didn't get a chance to he see his show, the new one, while it was on Broadway or off Broadway at the Cherry Lane Theater, now, guess what? Netflix has stepped in and <laughs> saved it, it for you guys. Uh, so this will be premiering globally on Netflix on November 26th. Um, I believe it is his like, third or fourth Netflix special. Uh, all wow. the Mike Birbiglia stuff up on Netflix. Um, but he will be performing the show live one final time. It'll be playing at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles. It will play from October 23rd through November 24th, and then that's it. Never again live. You've got to turn to <laughs> Netflix to watch it if you want. Um, it's fantastic. It's also co-written by Jennifer Hope Stein. Um, it was such a great show. Check it out on Netflix. Check out everything on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a new Skylar sister heading to Broadway. We have some Hamilton news. Yes, That's we always do. exciting. Crystal yeah. Joy Brown is joining the company on Broadway as Eliza. She is taking over for Danae Benton. Uh, Danae will play her last performance on December 8th, and Crystal will start on December 10th. Whoa. New Eliza. Yeah, yeah absolutely. New Skylar yeah. sister. Exciting. And the Magic Carpet Ride is getting a makeover. That is right, a newly configured, those are the exact terms, uh, a version of the North American tour of Disney's Aladdin will be uh, debuting in the fall of 2021. 2021, everything's for fall 2021 over here. Um, <laughs> the new Aladdin tour will allow the show to play, in audio, uh, to play in cities and venues that couldn't previously handle the production that is touring across North America right now. Hmm. But don't fret, that production still has 11 additional engagements in its future. You can see the last production, uh, or the last of this version on an April 26, 2020, when it is playing in Kansas City, Missouri, and then the newly configured tour will start in the fall of same 2021. Score, right? Same <laughs> score, right? Same score, same character, same Disney okay. magic, just, Disney magic. you know, a new little version of it. There you yeah. go. 
Well, Ryan, what yes. else do we have going on? Well, <laughs> there is this incredible feature with oh Hannah Corneau of Wicked. There, I, it's so amazing. The Beautiful. photos are incredible. Lindsay Sullivan did a great interview with Hannah. Yeah. Um, it's super cool. You should check it out. Get you in the spooky spirit for October and <laughs> Halloween. Little witchy. Mm -hmm. um, American Utopia. Open last night. Yes. Um, so we have full coverage of that, uh, Red David Carpet Byrne. Challenge, David Byrne um, photos um, on the scene as well. Uh, there are new Tug Rice illustrations for the five things that you should check out in New York City this week. Um, and there is another episode of Elaine Page on Sunday that you can track down on our site as well. But don't do that now. No, not don't now. Alexander right Silver's now. here, you guys. Yeah, get it together. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. You're very welcome. My Caitlin. pleasure. Will you tell us about our guest, please? Gladly. Yes, we got Miss Alexandra Silver here with us in the studio today, and she's here to talk all about the upcoming Fine Science 54 Below show called I Wish the Roles That Could Have Been. We love a subtitle. Alexandra will host the night. They'll also feature people like Etai Benson, who's just announced for a company, Kara Lindsay, who's literally about to pop out a baby, and whole more, and a bunch more people um, on October 27th. That's when this is happening. You may know her from her stellar run in The Fiddler on the Roof and Masterclass on Broadway. Broadway. She has a bunch of books out. She's a busy lady. Make sure you follow her on social media at Al Silbs and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Alexandra and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi. 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 This we is our first having... live at five. It is. I'm a little excited, a little Same. nervous, a little sweaty. Same. A little sweaty. You feel sweaty? Yeah, yeah, sweaty, but it's, you know, that time of year where you're like, what do I wear? October. What don't I wear? Correct. Right. Well, it's almost Halloween. I know, I'm very excited. Is that something you celebrate? I enjoy always dressing up as an Angela Lansbury character. Oh, well, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, Miss Lansbury is 94. She's 94. I celebrated her birthday. I noticed um, this. Yes, yes, I celebrate her birthday every year um, with a concert. Um, and uh, before I did the concert, I would just have a birthday party in my home. By yourself? Yeah. <laughs> normal, um, normal. No, and it was exciting. I uh, We actually came home from the concert. I was very ill, actually. and. Um, my boyfriend had never seen bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh my goodness. I know. Mm. And how did you ever get together? That seems weird. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, uh, you have to educate there, the people. Exactly, you have to educate the people. But we watched it, and it, it was a great success. And romantic. Indeed, bobbing <laughs> along, bobbing along, bobbing along. Yeah. So. Yes. You have a concert coming up next week. Yes, next I'm week? so excited. Um, I wish, Colin, the roles that could have been Thank because you for the we do love we do love a surtitle. Mm -hmm. um, so is, coulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. This is a coulda. Yes. And um, this was one of those things that um, I think all actors, just like the one that got away in personal life, it's that role that you always wanted or got really, really close to, and it never quite came your way. For me, the epitome of it is Little Red, which oh. is maybe why I'm wearing this jacket. Okay. Um, you know, Little it Red. It never came your way. It never came my way. And uh, in Into the Woods, I know people are always like, oh, you'd be a great, you'd be a great. And I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. Please call me. <laughs> but um, my spirit animal is Little Red. And Tell me why that role. I was not expecting you to say that. I have a very serious answer. Is that okay? Okay. No, we like, we like serious. Um, I think for me, I was a child that was, uh, my, you know, uh, it's now I talk about this a lot. I talk about this very openly that my dad passed away when I was 18. You wrote a book about it. I wrote a book about it. And um, while it's very, very processed, I do feel that Little Red is not... Um, even though she is a child, she's a character that goes through an extraordinary amount of adversity and trauma and comes out stronger. And there's this one particular moment, actually it's quoted in my book, White Hot Grief Parade. Um, there's an entire chapter called, I wish, I know. Um, because I feel like it's my younger self and my adult self having a conversation. I'm and she's so not exactly an innocent. No. And, or maybe she begins that way, but mm -hmm. uh, the... The young woman in the second act wearing a wolf skin around her neck is uh, a strong lady. She is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me about your guests. This is something you conceived and you yes. host? Yes. So I conceived it because I thought, you know what, I wanted it to be super, super positive, right? No no, no sour grapes, no negativity. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, I got so close to playing Annie and I played Pepper. Or <laughs> I ne or Mary Lennox never came my way. Or this role is never going to come my way because of a million casting reasons. Sure. But tonight, those dreams come true. 
I love it. And it's such it's a celebration. Exactly. Wishes come true. And it's such an exhilarating celebration of uh, manifestations come to pass. So it's a real party. It feels like a real party. And we've got, like, like you mentioned, Carl Lindsay, Itai Benson, Alexandra Sosha, Jason Sweet Tooth Williams, uh, Jelani Ramey, incredible, incredible performers. Mm-hmm. Um, Samantha Massell, my sister from sister. Uh, my sister gave me this bracelet I'm wearing. In fact, Aww. thank you, Sam. Um, incredible performers living out their dreams. So it's a really so wonderful. They all get to perform a song from one from that role. Precisely, they is. get to they get to go. That's something that never came my way, or that's something I always wish I could do, or that's going to complete the trifecta of whatever it may be. And then they get to perform it at Fifty Four Below, and their wish comes true. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love that. It's a real party. Feels October twenty really, seventh. October twenty seventh, nine thirty p.m. We only have thirty tickets left, so you Get must people. hurry. Um, and if you miss this one, we're doing it again Monday, February third, also at nine thirty. In the new year. In the new year. I love that. Now speaking of Samantha Massell, yeah. you guys shared a dressing room we very did. famously. We did. Mm-hmm. If there was a there was room fifty one. There was an Instagram account no. at dressing room fifty one. What do you wish for the West Side Story cast that will be inhabiting that dressing room? Um, I hope they also sign underneath the. Uh, we we it was really totally legal. It was fine. Absolutely legal. <laughs> I hope they sign underneath it, and I I hope they um, maybe we could. Uh, hand them over an Instagram takeover for a oh. week or so. Let us know, Jets and or Sharks. <laughs> Let us know. Or, or maybe the ladies. We don't know. Oh, we don't know. You're right. We don't know. Or Jet Girls, Shark Girls. <laughs> we don't know. Right. Um, but that could be fun. That could be fun. No, uh, it's it was wonderful. And, you know, that's that was a cast that really was a family. So we had a wonderful time. But I think each of us, Samantha and I, posted so much of each other that our friends were like, you got to cool it. And we thought, <laughs> we need an internet space that's just for us. And we created the account at Dressing Room 51 almost as a joke. And then it kind of took off. I was a fan. It was fun, right? It was really good. But that brings us to, well, you brought some props. I did. I brought that brings props. us to your book. Yes. Well, speaking of Broadway's huddle, I was a huddle once in London. So you were London. Seidel on Broadway. I was Seidel on Broadway, 2015-16. Right. And I was huddle in the West End, 2006-7-8. That was a long time. But you and weren't done with Huddle. I wasn't done with Huddle. So I, it was a character that really haunted me. I wanted to know um, about a strong 18-year-old girl that gets on this train to Siberia to pursue love and her life purpose. And so I went to Siberia. You went to Siberia. Yeah, did we not talk about that? I don't know. If I did. I went to that. Siberia. Tell everyone what the book is called. The book is called After Anna Tevka, a novel based on Fiddler on the Roof. And it is about what happens to Huddle and Perchik in Siberia. And what happened to you in Siberia? Um, what happened to me in mm-hmm. Siberia was extraordinary nature, um, extraordinary cold. I was going to say an extraordinary coat, I assume. Yes. Um, a lot of kasha and omul, which is a, omul. a I know lake fish. Okay. Um, <laughs> I came back snatched, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, and it's, um, it's a, a really an homage to oral tradition sort of mixed with Russian literature and you do get to see a lot of the scenes between the scenes that we're familiar with in Fiddler, but then also taking, walking forward with some new characters. And if reading in a book is not your thing, it is also available on audible.com where I read it to you. So that's kind of fun. You, that must have been fun to read. It was book. fun to do. To yes. Bring the performance side of yourself. Exactly. And um, my other book, White Hot Grief Parade, which is about my father and all of my incredible friends, it's also an homage to theater kids everywhere, mm-hmm. um, is also available on Audible and published from Pegasus Books. So those are those are two fun things to check out. And then I'm also doing an off Broadway yeah, is- musical. We're excited about this. V excited. It's a musical. Tell us where and when. Called Einstein's Dreams. Do you know this book? How prepared this woman is. I love a prop. (laughs) (laughs) I love a prop, you guys. Einstein's Dreams, based on this novel by Alan Lightman, who is probably one of our greatest living intellectuals. Um, One of my heroes, Alan Lightman and Malcolm Gladwell, are two of my big heroes. Um, A beautiful new musical written by Joshua Rosenblum, Joanne Lesser. It is with Prospect Theatre Company. And it is performing uh, from November 5th to December 14th at 59 East 59th Street Theaters. Um, it is about Einstein coming up with the theory of relativity. And it is oh, absolutely, it's, it's a musical. It's absolutely beautiful where we go into his mind and see all different versions of reality and space and time. And they eventually lead to E equals MC squared. I love that. And I am, I play Josette, who I'll just say, because I don't want to give too many spoilers oh, away. Of course not. Um, I am Einstein's 
muse. I love that. I'll say that. So I get to, I get to sing some absolutely beautiful music, um, really original, and has that beautiful musical theater, but with a little bit of a crossover into classical music flair. It's really fun. And an incredible cast, incredible company. So I know you guys have questions. It's but true. Oh, they do? They oh, do. Yes. But I have a question first. Yes. I want you to walk us through, just briefly, your writing process. <gasps> oh, I love that. Because you, we all know your performance process a little bit if we've seen you. Thank you. And if we peeked backstage at Dressing Room 51. But tell me about writing, because that's yeah. a whole other part of your brain you're using. It is. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people ask me about comparing and contrasting. And I'll say that the, there's two main things. Theater, beautifully, is an art form that was created in ancient Greece. <laughs> um, created in ancient Greece for the purpose of being consumed socially and also created socially. It's a social art form. You have to be collaborative. You have to work together. And it's supposed to be consumed in public. And writing and reading are its opposite, mm -hmm. right? Consumed in solitude and also created in solitude. And I think for me, it really speaks to sort of an ambivert personality that I do have really highly developed extrovert skills, but I'm very introverted and need a lot of time alone to process life. And writing has always helped me do that, as has reading. I think as a kid, um, you know, with everything going on in my family, I had really big huge cosmic questions and not a lot of peers to discuss them with when you're a kid. Um, but I could talk about it with John Steinbeck and, Leo, sure. you know, with Tolstoy and Gogol. And I had these big cosmic conversations with them. Um, so I think my writing process really begins with meditating around an idea. And I'm kind of a half and half. There's writers that they call pantsers, meaning you write by the seat of your pants. Oh, I see. Um, Stephen King is famously a pantser where he goes, so I no didn't, outlines then. Yes, exactly. I didn't kill Stephen. I walked into the room and found him dead is a very famous sort of way of looking at that. Answer. Okay. Answers. Mm -hmm. And then there's outliners. Um, uh, Dan Brown is a famous outliner where you know you almost write 150 pages of outline before you even begin. I'm sort of somewhere in the middle. I'm called a snowflaker. I do not know all these terms. Isn't this fun? Aren't you learning things today? Learning You're so learning, much. learning today. Mm -hmm. Snowflakers have sort of um, stop gaps at which they go, this is going to happen. This has to happen in uh, somewhere You know where you're going. You have a little I map. I know where I'm going, but I also allow myself to follow my instincts, which I think models acting, right? I think that mm -hmm. models theatrically. Right. And going, okay, I'm building this. I'm adding watercolor layers to what this is. I'm filling it out. And I go back. Um, sometimes I'll go, ooh, that's a plot point that I didn't see coming, and I'll work backwards and work mm -hmm. it in. But... Um, I think one of the things that's really interesting is oftentimes novelists find it really difficult to work on creating believable characters and believable dialogue. And for me, of course, that comes really naturally because that's what you do. That's what I do. That's my night job. <laughs> so yeah, it's really it's really wonderful and super rewarding. And um, and it's also it's given me this opportunity on book tours to to meet a completely different crowd of people. You know, people that I have huge conversations with that I'd never meet at a stage door. That's um, fun. That might never also be able to come to New York, come to Broadway. So it's wonderful. I love that. That's a good question. Oh, well, thank you. Now let's take your questions. Let's take your questions. Yes. I'm Ask watching away. Caitlin scroll through. So Caitlin, tell I us. Ready to go. Okay. Uh, Nicolette says, well, she asks, how has your life shaped the kind of art you want to pursue? After Broadway evolved, I read your book so quickly. They are fantastic. Thank you, Nicolette. Um, Broadway Evolved is a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, founded by Cynthia Rose and Betsy Wolf. And um, I think that uh, that's a great question, that my art and my life, I believe firmly that, uh, using a metaphor, we're the only clay we have, right? Mm -hmm. That um, the, the frame of reference that I have is my interpretation of the experiences I've had in life. But I also try to stay really, really curious and learn a lot about um, different perspectives, um, different ways of life, different paradigms, faith systems, cultures, um, in order to inform myself so that I can have owned experience to offer my art. But I love, I will say what I love is, as I've grown and become less of a girl and more of a woman, um, I find that I have very different things to say to offer my art. Mm -hmm. Cool. So Alana says, Al Silver is the coolest person ever. That's the tea. Thanks, Alana. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. 
<laughs> and how does it feel to kind of see, you know, the, your people who find you on Broadway follow you into your book writing and vice versa? They're following you through your different... It's really exhilarating. Writing. You know, one of my, just as, a, as an anecdote, follow up to that, one of my favorite moments was I was doing a book event and, you know, talking about how this book came to be, et cetera, et cetera, which it did include... Um, the West End and Broadway productions of yeah. Fiddler. And what was so amazing, this old older woman raised her hand and she said, I'm so sorry, I've been listening to your story, but I'm so confused. You're an actor? And oh. I thought, oh my goodness, to this woman, I'm just the author of this book. And mm -hmm. that's so wonderful to be able to sort of see yourself through a different pair of glasses like that. Um, it's fantastic. And like I said, you get to meet people from places I might never otherwise go or that might not otherwise show up at a Broadway stage door. Hmm. So it's really fun. It's wonderful. Yeah. That's cool. So Mandy wants to know, in honor of your show, what is the craziest character that you want, you like wish you could play? Okay, so this, oh, this is long, okay? But like, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that um, my dream probably will never play it role, unless somebody out there would like to call me, is I Captain Hook. Oh. oh. Here Captain Hook. We were not ready here for, for it. We were not ready for that I was going to say Cap I was going to say <laughs> Captain Hook hands down, but I think I'll say Captain Hook hand down. Um, because she's a writer. Good. Yeah. Um Captain Hook Mary Lennox passed me by, Little Red passed me by. Um and you know what's interesting? Why Captain Hook? Well, because he has the greatest lyric in all of musical theater. Mrs. Hook's little baby boy. Wouldn't you I mean <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> anyway, uh, so fun, so camp, so... Uh, His trauma changed him. Totally trauma changed him. I just think it's absolutely spectacular, and I want to do it, and someone call me. Um, but also, you know what? I will say as a comment, as a serious comment, I recently, like literally on Sunday, finished playing Sally Bowles mm -hmm. outside Washington, D.C. at Olney Theater Center, and Sally is a character that in a million years I never thought I would play. Really? I never had any dreams of doing it. I thought... Fraulein Schneider is my cabaret role, and I'll play it later in my life. And it took a director really seeing it inside me. And the one of the big lessons that I'm going to talk about um, at the concert on Sunday is don't box yourself in. Mm. The world yeah. is going to do that to you. You might not see it, but it, someone else might Absolutely. see it. Absolutely. And I had to dig really deep and find things I didn't even know were there, and it was really exhilarating. What so. did you learn from Sally? Well, I think I learned to... First, the, I think the biggest thing for me was, aside from just singing outside my comfort zone and like kind of, if I do say so, kind of killing it, um, <laughs> but also about uh, ex body acceptance, mm -hmm. um, absolute embracing of sensuality, a, a thing of like, I didn't think I could do those things, but I could do them on behalf of her. Nice. Um, and so therefore I learned that I could do those things. But also just um, the power of denial, uh, the 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 absolute ferocious clinging on to a dream almost to the point of absurdity and embracing a person's inner charisma and inner ugly. I really love playing characters that are not always, well, it's not always, but certainly I love playing characters that, are, that have a lot of darkness to them. It's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. I love, love that. that. All right, we have time for, I think, one more. One more yes, one, last question is Jared wants to know, how does it feel to just kind of be able to see the continuation of these concerts that you're doing, that you have two nights for this one, you've done it before. Yeah. What's it like? It's such a joy. You know, it's wonderful to think that you created something that people respond to, mm. and especially because I think it was created out of, it literally was born out of a tweet. I said, okay, somebody needs to do a concert where I get to do this and this person gets to do this. And here, you know, I, I listed all of the things I thought people should do. And 54 Below was like, call us. Um, <laughs> and, and it's just so wonderful to think that this really is a, uh, enough of a party and enough of a celebratory moment that other people feel moved by it and excited by it. And I'm honored to create things that touch people's hearts and minds and funny bones. It's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Love well, it. ladies and gentlemen, actress, author, wish fulfiller, oh. Alexandra Silber. It's one of my wishes to always come back and back and back to Broadway.com. I love welcome. it here. welcome. Member of the family. See her in Einstein's dreams. Mm -hmm. Please come. It's going to be very, very, very beautiful. See Pick her up a book. 54 Below if you can snatch one of those tickets. I'm sure you can. You can do it.
Come on. Believe in Bye, you. internet. Bye. <laughs> hey, Lynn, take us on out, please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Kristen Stokes of The Lightning Thief, the Percy Jackson musical.